Hey everyone, welcome to Filter Grade. Today we're taking a look at Adobe Audition. Audition is the audio recording and editing program included in the Adobe Creative Suite and a popular choice for podcasts, video production, and much more. In today's video, we'll be starting with the absolute basics of Audition and how to get started with some common editing tools. I'll be assuming that you already have a microphone set up and plugged into your computer in whatever way that it attaches. To configure the microphone properly, open Audition and click on Edit, then Preferences, then Audio Hardware. If necessary, change your audio input and audio output to whatever microphone and speakers you want to use. Great, now all of our audio should be going to the right places. Now all you need to do to record a basic recording is to hit the big red record button. The first test recording will help you determine the optimal levels for your microphone. If you have an input volume dial on your mic, this is where you should calibrate it first. There will be a waveform on screen showing your recording as well as a green bar on the bottom. If that green bar starts going into the red, then your input gain is too high and you should turn it down on your microphone. If it's peaking up into the yellow, that's alright. In general, your voice should sit around the minus 12 to minus 6 dB range to avoid being too loud or too quiet. To stop the recording, click on the square stop button or hit the space bar on your keyboard. Now you have your first recording, and no matter how advanced you are, every new audition project starts with a recording like this. What happens now is where things will get interesting. Now that you know how to record, we can get familiar with the default interface of Adobe Audition. In the top left, we have the files panel, which will show all of your open audio files. So if you record something in Audition or drag in a file from elsewhere, that will show up here. Below that is the media browser. If you're familiar with Adobe Premiere Pro, this panel should be familiar. It lets you browse your disks to import files directly. It actually has a pretty good interface for finding audio files. While browsing, you can listen to files before importing them simply by clicking once on them as long as you have the autoplay button toggled on. This is a test recording for the Adobe Audition tutorial video. This will make the process of finding the perfect sound for your project that much easier, such as if you're looking for the perfect sound effect in your library for a podcast transition. Also in this box is Effects Rack, which will make more sense once we start adding more effects. After that is Markers, which again, if you're familiar with Premiere Pro already, this will make a lot more sense. Markers let you take notes along the timeline of your audio recording, and those will show up here once you've made them. Lastly for this box, the Properties tab shows project information such as sample rate and duration. Moving down, there's the History panel, which will show a log of all the edits you've made. The Video panel will actually show you all the videos you've imported. That's pretty weird, right? That an audio software can import video? Well, much like how Photoshop is able to handle videos, so does Audition. This will let you work directly with the audio track of a video. Over on the far right is the Essential Sound panel. In the multi-track view, which we'll look at later on, this panel will become very useful for adding effects to your project. Finally, there are the main project elements, with the editor and the mixer in the very center, the latter of which also only applies to multi-track editing. And then the Levels tab is underneath, along with the Selection slash View tab. The Levels will show your audio volume levels in real time, and the Selection slash View tab will show the start, endpoint, and duration of whatever you're currently selecting and viewing. Up at the top right, we have a drop-down list of default workspaces. These are useful for various workflows and feature options such as radio production, advanced mixing, and more. To navigate the editor screen, you can use the scroll bars, but you can also use the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in on wherever your cursor is pointing. You can hold the shift key and scroll to pan left or right. Now let's add a few basic effects. Open up the effects rack panel and click on the right arrow on the first effect area, and you'll see a menu with plenty of options. You can also click on effects on top of the screen, which will produce the same list. For now, let's add some compression to our recording with the Single Band Compressor Dual. This is a test recording for the Adobe Audition tutorial video. To show what adding an effect like this does, we can click over in the top right of the editor to show the preview editor. This will let us see a before and after of the audio waveform. To really see what this is doing, let's pick the pancake batter preset. You can really see that this compression preset is cutting down the loud parts to match the quiet parts. This is a test recording for the Adobe Audition tutorial video. Then, if we increase the makeup gain to be a more normal volume, we can actually see the waveform getting taller again. This is a great visualization of your audio and a quick way to check if you're peaking or if you're looking good to go. This is a test recording for the Adobe Audition tutorial video. This is a test recording for the Adobe Audition tutorial video. 
Once you click the apply button on the bottom, that effect is burned into the audio. Don't worry, you can always go to your history tab if you need to undo this action. Now let's check out the multi-track editing view. This, like the name suggests, lets you edit multiple audio tracks at once. This is perfect for something like a podcast with multiple speakers, music, and sound effects, or even a song with multiple instruments. To open the multi-track view, go to the top left and click on multi-track. Give the project a name, set the save location, and then you will likely be able to leave the other settings at their default values. Now you'll have multiple audio tracks that will layer on top of each other. One of the differences between the waveform and multi-track editors is that waveform editing is technically destructive, as we're making permanent changes to the audio. With multi-track editing, we can easily toggle on and off effects on various tracks whenever we want to. So we can add a voiceover track to track 1, followed by a back-end music track to track 2. Now, when you play your project, you'll hear both playing at the same time. This is a test recording for the Adobe Audition tutorial video. To apply effects, you can use the effects rack just like before, whether those effects are audio enhancements like compression and EQ, or more specialized effects like reverb or chorus. This is a test recording for the Adobe Audition tutorial video. When you're done with your project, you'll need to export as an audio file. Click on File, Export, Multitrack Mixdown, Entire Session, then select your file type and save location. Most likely, you want to choose to export a WAV file, as these are high quality. MP3 is also good if you need a smaller file to upload online. Now we're going to cover some of the common editing tools you might want to use in Adobe Audition. Firstly, if you want to edit only a specific part of an audio track in waveform view, you can just highlight it to select it, then apply effects. However, to avoid confusion on larger projects, you should just move this section to a different track in the multi-track editor and apply a different rack of effects to them. It's easy to lose track of where your edits are if you're just using the waveform editor, but this can be fine for a quick edit. To adjust the volume of a specific part of an audio track, use the yellow line that runs across the waveform. You can click and drag to move the volume of the entire track up or down. You can also use keyframes to fade audio or adjust specific parts of a track. To add a keyframe, just click on the line where you want a keyframe to be placed. You need at least two keyframes to make it work. If, for example, you want to lower the volume of one section, you would need four keyframes. For each side of this dip, you would need a keyframe at the point where the audio is at its normal volume, and then another keyframe at the point where the audio is at its lowest point. You can decide how dramatic of a change you want by adjusting the angle of the line. A sharp decline will result in a sudden change in volume, whereas a long slope will result in a slow fading of the volume. Recording. We audition tutorial. The blue line on the waveform is for panning left and right. It uses keyframes in the same way as the volume line, and as you move keyframes, you'll be able to see what percentage of the audio is going to be on the left channel or the right channel. In for the Adobe Audition tutorial video. You can apply a quick fade in or a fade out by dragging the gray squares in the top corners of the editor. This lets you precisely add a fade with a minimal amount of layered effects. This is a test recording for the Adobe Audition tutorial video. To delete a section in waveform view, just select the area you want to delete and press the delete key. This will automatically fill the space. In addition to moving clips around along the timeline or across different tracks, you may also want to slice parts out of audio clips and rearrange them or delete them entirely. To do this in the multi-track view, you can select the razor tool from the top toolbar and make a slice at the desired editing point. Now you'll be able to drag around each section independently or across tracks. You can also use this to delete sections. Start by using the razor tool at two points, use the select tool to highlight that section, then just press the delete key to get rid of it. Unlike in waveform view, this will leave a gap rather than filling it, which is essential for more complex edits like podcasts. Hopefully now you have what you need to get started with Adobe Audition. There are plenty of effects to work with and each has their own interface. We didn't touch on too many of them in this video, but you can check out our video on the Essential Sound Panel in Premiere Pro to get a slightly better feel for some audio effects that exist in both programs. Let us know what you'd like to see from FilterGrade next video, and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss our future tutorials. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And if you're looking for professional LUTs, Lightroom desktop and mobile presets, Premiere Pro templates, and more photo and video education, visit FilterGrade.com today.